Shalom, Chabarim, Shalom. This is Ras Ayadonis. This is Yadin here. And we're responding to Ze Agazeto Zion. Ze Agazeto Zion, thank you for your comment to uh, who lied, the serpent lied, and Eve, the woman beguiled, not Yahweh, Ha Elohim, Ha Alahayim. Not the true good, the true God, the Elohim. Now, is there a Gazeto Tzion? About 11, maybe a little more than 11 hours now, but 11 hours ago, had commented, said that Iodonis did not extensively go through the quote Hebrew end quote to, I think you're saying actually, to actually, to actually explain anything. Hmm. Okay, that's your first that's your first statement right there. This is what we like to do, but sometimes ones are all over the place and trying to get into some little, you know, some little other business. That's why sometimes we have not. We used to comment more to the comments or follow up on comments, but more on the groups. We like to, you know, reason with you a little bit more because I think you had more to say. But just based on what you have said, we said, let's address this particular comment. I was surprised that even though we... You know, in the Latin, speaking about the English letters, you know, spell out our name many times, many ones, you know, we just say it, we type it in different ways. And it's like, you know, reading comprehension and just re-articulating what's there. But that's a whole other point because you said ridiculous ram, ram, rambling. No, it's rambling, rambling, ridiculous rambling. Well, you said that I, Adonis, I, Yadin, did not extensively extensively right keyword and he, he 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 wrote this and so therefore we said well he knew that we did go through the hebrew but he would like us to go through it more extensively to actually i mean actually explain anything or actually explain something what do you what would you like us to explain that's the question zea gazeto zea gazeto tzion what would you like us to actually explain all right also he says also this is the second second point also if concordances 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 actually would be apostrophe after the s now i'm pointing to this because iron sharp and iron we thought his you know his comment here was to sharpen us and to you know kind of drape us up on a point or at least attempt it you know, drape us up on a point that we didn't extensively go through the, quote, Hebrew to actually explain anything. Extensively. Okay, where would you like us to go more extensively into the, quote, Hebrew, end quote? This makes us think that, well, maybe there's a doubt as to whether it's really Hebrew or not, and so forth and so on. Then he says, also, if concordance is concordance, like one concordance or many concordances, or the concordance. See, when you say concordance, the way you spoke, spelt it here, I'm going to point to this because iron sharp and iron, right? Let's see. We, we took this very well, and also we commented too. We'll show you the comment in a moment right here. This is something that we haven't done recently before, but we like to do a little bit more when one has a, we think, something valid to say. And we think that Zea Gazeto Zion might have something valid to say. So when you say the concordance, you're speaking about one concordance or many concordances. Which concordance are you speaking about? The Strong's concordance? Okay, if the concordance, Strong's concordance, I'm just saying that right there because I think this is what he means. Because of how he wrote it, you know, we had to kind of like, you know, fill in the blanks. We could say, well, you did not, Zea Gazeto did not extensively go through any comment that we can really extensively go through to follow up on but anyway if the concordance and lexicons speaking i think of one concordance and one lexicons lexicons what see when you do apostrophe s is a possessive so that means what there's something missing from what you're saying maybe you don't you, you didn't get this maybe you won't get this right here but at least get the fact that we're seeking to respond to what you're saying right here and maybe you can be on one of our groups the hebrew for Rastafari, whether you are a Rastafari or not, this is a group that we have, and these are the sort of things that we would like to go through with the, you know, with ones and ones, especially with the brothers, with the Wendemoch, you know, with the Chabarim, 
the Machibetenyot. Machibetenyot is the Amharic word. But anyway, the second thing, so he said, firstly, that we didn't extensively go through. So we did go through the Hebrew, but he said that that was not enough to explain, actually, to actually explain anything. Okay. Also, he says, if the concordances, see, we, we're saying concordances, but the way he spelled concordance, apostrophe S, one concordance and one lexicon got it, got what, what, what it, got it from the Ethiopic. Now, we remember the point that we made. We said that many of the, con the strong concordance and um, the Gesenius, Gesenius lexicon, we did make this point. And I'm happy you picked up on that point because a lot of ones don't pick up on the point to either acknowledge it or at least even to comment on it. Have you done any follow-up in the concordance? Now, you may have gone to the Blue Letter Bible, which we have recommended over like a decade to two ago, and more of the, you know, more of the young scholars out there, like yourself and others, are going through these different lexicons, or at least the Blue Letter Bible, some of the interlinear softwares to, you know, better follow up and study, look at the Blue Letter, you know, the the, the hyperlink words, the H this, the, the G that, you know, they have these numbers and everything. We show it in some of the videos and everything. But anyway, you said that, well, if that is so, right, if they got it from the Ethiopic, the Gutus, then why did you not refer to that? We did refer to that. That wasn't our primary point. The primary point in the video you comment to, who lied, right, C question mark, the serpent lied, and Eve, the woman lied. So that video, as we recall it, was basically going from low degrees to high degrees. It was going from the English, right? Going from the KJV English, right? And saying that even in the English, you can see that the serpent lied and the woman lied. Need we go through this again? Perhaps we was, we was, we was going through it too fast. We, we need to go a little bit slower. And maybe it sounded like rambling to you. But there were points being made there, right, concerning the serpent, right? That it wasn't a Hebrew. It wasn't a Hebrew point necessarily. The point that we went into the Hebrew was on um, Mota Timotun, Mot Timotun, right? Mot Timotun. We pointed to the word right there, but we didn't go through all like we highlighted it, but we didn't go through it. Yeah, we didn't go through that extensively, but we just went through that to explain that in the context of that, in the day that you eat of it, you will die. The Hebrew brings out the sense, in the day that you eat of it, death, you will die. Death, you will die. You will be dying. You'll be dying in that day. In other words, you will start to degenerate. They were in a very good condition from Genesis chapter 1, straight through to Genesis chapter 2. In chapter 2, the command was given to the man. Was the command given to the man? Or was the command given to the man and the woman? See, we have to understand, or we should begin to understand. Let me speak a little simpler. Begin to understand um, hierarchy and priority and order because the man was commanded by Yahweh. Right? Yahweh was commanded by Yahweh Ha Elohim. Was commanded by, in the King James Version, quote, the Lord God, end quote. Right? Not the man and the woman. Right? The serpent referred to Elohim, not to Yahweh He, Yahweh the Elohim, or to God and not the Lord God which is a, could be seen, and we see this as a disrespect right there at the beginning, right? In other words, it's like this. It's like if I say, um, um, Rafiq, <laughs> my father, my earthly father, right? His Arab name, you know, was Rafiq, right? If I say Rafiq, right? Rafiq, my father. And somebody comes up to me and says, did father say? Now, the first thing, if they're not my brother or sister, are they talking about my father? For example, if one says, um, let me just find a name. If one says, Eve, if it's Eve, your wife, right? 
Eve, your wifey, and someone comes up to you and say, did wifey do such and such? Did wifey say such and such? Now, if this person wasn't there and they asked you that, wouldn't you say, ask for more clarity? Say your wife said to you, your wife said, and I'm giving an example right here. This is just an example right here. Like just a reasoning, a logical example to try to bring out this basic KJV English point, right? Even regarding, you know, the serpent line and how Eve, the woman, was beguiled. She says so on the record, according to the Bible, according to the scripture, according to the narrative. This is the point of reference. It's not saying whether it happened, whether it didn't happen, whether you believe it, whether you don't believe it. It's like in reading comprehension in, in school, right? We're asked to read a, pas a passage, right, and answer some questions, whether the questions are true or false. So there are some who says that Yahweh, hey, the Elohim, and we notice that they they take the respect off of the Elohim, right? The Elohim. There was few points that we did refer to Hebrew on. I don't know which particular point you would like us to go more extensively, and what you did not understand about it. You said we didn't actually explain anything, but we did explain enough things. Perhaps you did not understand the explanation. See, some people turn it around on you. They'll say, well, you didn't explain anything. But really what it is is that they did not understand anything. They didn't understand anything or they would like a little more understanding on this point or that point. So while I was making the point about who lied in the garden, we was going from the low degrees, the English, what's easily accessible to us and what most of us are familiar with, the King James Version of the Bible. Because this is the version of the Bible, I think it was referring to um, following up on the Nepal Shada, and I think it was what was it JJ seven thousand on the, on the Sarneta. They had a debate back and forth, and it was on the subject matter about who lied, right? If I'm correct, because she brought something forward and we got to see it. It was our our wifey, you know, our Isha Isha Shelley, right? Me stay, me stay in them hark. Right, that had actually, you know, showed me it, and she was watching it a little bit, and I checked it out a little bit, and I heard some points made. I started to think about these points. I said, let me follow up on a video to maybe add a little more clarity to it. Now you say, well, when we went through the Hebrew, we didn't actually explain anything. The Hebrew that I recall we going through was the in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die, explaining the Hebrew context of that as best as we could. You say we didn't, ex I don't know if that's the point right there. There's a couple of other areas of the Hebrew that we did zoom in on. Our main, um, our main articulation was just that on the plain English, just in the plain English of what the scripture says, you find inconsistencies, right, in the argument that Yahweh hey, the Elohim. And we're going to say Yahweh hey, the Elohim, not just the Elohim. You see, that was a disrespect. We're not going to follow in the Nahash, Nahash is serpent in the, in the Hebrew. We're not going to follow the, the Nahash as Eve did or as the Isha did, right? Speaking of Hawa as Eve did and as later on Adam following his woman. See, the whole order was reversed. So we were showing that in the rightful order, it was the man that was commanded. And when Eve had responded to it, she responded to it as though she was there. And then the man being there, he didn't say nothing. He didn't man up. He didn't say, no, 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 no. I was commanded. And first of all, put respect on the Elohim. See, even in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, it says that Yahweh, hey, the Elohim, Right, that the serpent was most um, subtle of all the, the beasts of the field, the most subtle beast of the field. I'm paraphrasing now, you know, because when you're reading the Hebrew and even the Royal Amharic and other areas of ancient scriptures, you begin to see how the translator no doubt translate like that. But also you get to see sometimes better ways of bringing out what the original actually says. And that's what we did with in the day that you eat of it death, you will be dying. That's the way we recall our bringing out the translation of the Mot Timotun, the Mot Timotun, 
Now, if you look at the concordance, you're going to see mot mot, but that's not the Hebrew, right? But that's good, at least, if you go to the concordance. Now, when the second point that you have here, if the concordance and the lexicon, lexicon, lexicon got it from the Ethiopic, then why did you not refer to that also? Also, if concordances and lexicons got it from the Ethiopic, then why did you not refer to that also? Also, also, okay? As well as the Syriac, which is in the Hebrew lexicon also. Then he put a bunch of uh, question marks, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about eight or so. And he said, this is ridiculous ram, ram, rambling. Rambling. No, first of all, you, you need to get up your, your English a little bit. It's rambling. It's rambling. Right? It's rambling, not rambling. Right? Okay. You might say this is rambling too. So from some, because even though we slow it down and we try to go over the fact that we did not extensively go through the Hebrew because it was a basic English point. We didn't want to try to just throw Hebrew at people who were looking at the English we went through the English and saying, even from the English perspective, you should be able to see that it's the serpent who had lied, right? And Eve, the woman who was beguiled. The simplest point we could have made was that, well, if that was so, then after Yahweh, the Elohim, came walking through the garden in the cool of the day, right? Why did they hide? Right? Why did they hide? If they're so wise, they will find a better way of dealing with it, don't you think? That hiding... You know, why were they ashamed? They wasn't ashamed when they were naked before. Why did they sew fig leaves on them and only the part they covered was their loins? You know what I'm saying? Instead of what happened later on when Yahweh, hey, the Elohim, gave them coats of skin. It's obvious that their wisdom wasn't on the level of really doing anything because it was a lie what the serpent had told them, basically. All right? So we looked at the serpent being a liar, right? Eve, the woman being beguiled or tricked, and Adam losing his headship because he was there witnessing the whole thing, right? And he let his woman, the Isha, go out front and, and confront or verse or respond on the we aspect, and yet it was he who was given the command. He was given command. And the same thing happens. It's like how to make a slave. I don't know if you've seen this document, the Woolly Lynch papers. And it said, have the woman out front and have like the man running behind. I'm paraphrasing, but, but put the reverse the order. Basically reverse the order. Right? And so in the how to make a slave document or let's make a slave or it's, this is what it's called many times. Um, the Woolly Lynch papers. Right? The devil, in that sense, right, said that what they're going to do is they're going to mix up the, the, the order, the true order, right, and put the woman out front, right, traumatize her, right, so she'll be scared for her young black child, especially the male, right, and basically have the man running behind scared, right, and this is exactly what we have in the Gan Ba'adin, the Gannett to Aden. Right, the Gannett to Aden is the way it's in the Ethiopic, and the way it's is that that's the Ethiopic, the Gannett to Aden, right? The Hebrew, the Gan, but Aden. So we can even see the similarities of the Afro Shemitic languages right there, right? Now, this is just commenting on his comment, and we give thanks for his comment, right? Even when he says, I Adonis, or I Adonis did not extensively go through the Hebrew. When we saw, wow, you, you spelled my name the way that we spell it in the English out there on so many different platforms and attach so many different videos, vlogs, other information and reasoning that we put out there. But then the first thing you said was that we didn't extensively go through the Hebrew to actually explain anything. Well, we did. I think that we went through the Hebrew and what we went through to explain you didn't understand. You could have asked, well, Iodonis, can you be clearer on this point where you talked about the Hebrew? Can you just do a video where you focus on this part, this area right here, and just refer to it, either the, the minute stamp or from where to where in the, you know, in the video? It was the time stamp, should I say, the time stamp? You know, if that's what you would like us to elaborate on. Now, the second point, we're going to deal with the second point, because the first point, you just make a, you, you just give your opinion. 
basically this is your opinion your subjective opinion you said we didn't extensively so we did go through the hebrew but you said that we didn't go through it enough for you to understand zeragazeto sion and we hope we're pronouncing your name well from our reading and understanding of the ethiopic this is what the name seems and appears to be zeragazeto sion all right so to the second point concerning the concordance so here's where we like to go to the second point. Now, here, over here, I think we did this right here. Where do we respond? Okay, where do we take a screenshot? Did we do the screenshot over here? Okay, let, let's go over here. Let's just pause this just quickly. All right, so here, 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 this is, I should have clicked the read more and took a screenshot of it because we're on the airplane mode now so that communications from brothers and sisters in you know, the various ones that we communicate with and send us updates won't interrupt the video. This is how we responded. Thanks, Zell Gazetto, Zion again. Thank you for your comment. You said I didn't go through the Hebrew to actually explain anything. Well, I did. Uh, and then I go on to say, well, it may be that you didn't understand. You know, and then a couple of more statements we made right there. And we even said we would do a video, right? We'll do a video to... um this video that we're doing right here all right this video that we're doing right here so let's just put this here okay let's go to okay here's some of the concordances we actually the loj society was going to do a reprint on this we'll still do a reprint on it it's about like 900 and something pages right the jesenius we're going to point to exactly what we're talking about the jesenius hebrew and chaldee lexicon to the old testament William or Valheim, Gesenia, Samuel, uh, Predo, um, uh, uh, Tregelis, Tregeli, right? I don't know, that's French, I'm not, that, that's not a language I'm very strong in, right? Kind of ironic seeing that, you know, my people over here under the so-called slave name, it's like a French name, so it's like kind of interesting right there, they're there. But anyway, being that as it is, okay, the good is, Right, we're talking about the good is. So to his 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 point, or to the point that he was seeking to make right here, this is also showing how you know the letters can be matched up from the Ethiopic right to the Hebrew, from the Ethiopic to the Hebrew, the Ethiopic to the Hebrew, plus the diphthongs. There's some diphthongs there, right? The diphthongs, like two letters that come together to make another sound. Like the first letter, Aleph, the sound is A. Ah. But because we're in this English speaking thing, ones will say A. If I write just a, the A, they'll pronounce it as A. And that's how it is in English. But in the Hebrew, the sound, the sonant will be A. Ah, A. Ah. You know what I mean? Now, if I add a, a Yod after it, like a Y sound, it could be I, or it can be kind of pointed as A. A, I, or A, all right? It can also be pointed as I, 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 you know? So this is just some of the linguistics of it. I hope that explains just a little something. That's not a big point, but it's a very important point. It's a point that matters too. I had picked this up on, on getting ready to do the video. I see where here it's looking at the, the Ethiopic, right? The manuscript right there. And then you see in the background, you see over here the Hebrew, right? The Hebrew, right? The Hebrew, the Ethiopic, the Hebrew. But to your point concerning, well, um, how come the I didn't go there, you know? And I said, okay, that was my further comment. I thought I took a screenshot of that. But the further comment was that um, I didn't have that resource already uploaded and available on my phone. Because the main point was about who lied. And to bring out that the serpent, the Nahash, the Ibab, that the serpent lied. And the woman was beguiled. That it was the serpent who was a liar in the Ganba Aden, in the Ganeta Aden incident. And we focus mainly on the English perspective. Just to show that most people will look at Genesis chapter 3, right? And assume that Yahweh, hey, the Elohim lied. But then if they refer to the previous chapter, Genesis chapter 2, you can see the inconsistency of that argument. It's, it's amazing. It's almost like people will say today, like, oh, they've been reading the English translation of the Bible, right? And they'll say that, well, 
the Hebrews, the Israelites, the Yehudi, the Jews, or whoever that may have had the scripture for, for thousands of years, right, going all the way back into the B.C. times, that they, they didn't understand. Nobody understood, but they somehow understand that what, the, what our ancestors believed and accepted and knew to be the truth, they're reading an English version, and they know better by reading an English version. I mean, even that whole premise right there is what is really ridiculous, what is really ridiculous. And we wasn't offended. Actually, we, we were thankful that Zagazeto Sion made a comment right here. These are the points that sometimes we like to go into and elaborate a little bit more on. We just ask that he can zoom in on a specific area, not saying that, well, I did not extensively go through the quote Hebrew, end quote, right, to explain, to actually, well, spell actually correctly, actually, to actually, right, explain anything. That means that I actually explained something, but you didn't understand, right? And maybe pride would make you think like, oh, like pride would make me think like if I was on some pride, oh, you don't know what you're talking about and I'll just ignore you or whatever, blah, 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 blah or say something, side, don't. No. I'm curious about what you really had to say about where I did not extensively go through the Hebrew. Well, basically, what you did not understand by the explanation that I brought forward. Right? I'm using this slide right here to study materials because there's a lot of study materials. So it was basically KJV using the MySword software to go into the key words Right. You know what? Let's just go there for a moment. Let's just go there for a moment. And then we're going to go to what's the time looking at right here. We're going to go to the um, the Gesenius, Gesenius lexicon. Right. Gesenius lexicon. So right here. Um, let's go through this right here. The Gesenius, you can see it's right there. It's it's ready to it's ready to roll. OK, so let's go to this right here. Bring this up. This was for another point that we was working on. Let's go to, um, let's write surely die. Let's see, surely, let's write this, spell this correctly, surely die, all right? And I hope you're not offended that we just pointed out some of your, um, the English, the, the aquily and the ram, ram, ramling, like you're hearing, you're spelling it as you hear it, but we're happy that at least you spelled our name as it's written, all right? Zea Gazeto. So here, 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 this is one of the areas we went to, Genesis chapter Bereshith, Genesis um, chapter 2, Orit Ze Ledet in the Ge'ez, Orit Ze Ledet, Orit Ze Fitret. It has these two titles, one the Torah of the creation, one the Torah of, of um, birth, Ledet, birth, Fitret, creation. Orit, the Ethiopic word for Torah, right, from Araya. I hope I explained that. I hope you look it up so you can vet it and prove or disprove. But you, if you look it up, you're going to be able to prove that what we said was true. But if you don't look it up and expect me to, you know, spoon feed everything, just, just while making one point, we alluded to this other point. But we're going to bring that forward. But here's a good example right here. You see what says, surely die? It's good that ones are going to Blue Letter Bible, right? This is something we advocated over two decades ago, and we hear a lot of ones in video say, okay, let's go to the Blue Letter Bible, let's go to the, you know, concordance, or blah, blah, blah. And it's like, hey, but ones know how to maybe read well, but don't know how to understand well, Like, right? So ones may read well, or maybe even hear well, but they're not hearing the understanding because they still need some tools. So iron sharpen iron, we hope this is a, Iron sharp and iron moment. So you see in the last the last um, phrase, the hareg, the hareg from the Ethiopian, the last hareg, the phrase, for in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Notice that the word surely is the H4191. And the word die is the H4191. Now, can somebody ask, how can that be? Right? Now, here, let's just look up the word surely. Right? Remember, it was the H4191, H4191. Uh-oh, in Genesis chapter 9, verse 5, surely is the H389. And this is where a lot of ones who are just going to the, the first level, this is like the first level, going from the English to the 
concordance with the blue letter links, the blue letter keyword, key phraseology links, right? And so what they do is they'll go through the, this word right here, and this word has ak, ak. Now, some, some Hebrews in their Lashan Kadash, they would say ak, and ak, they say, well, ak means brother. It's not the word ak that means brother. Ak is a interjective, like an interjective, like an interjection. Ak, right? It's ach, ach, with the ch, the chet, the chet. Ach, ach is brother, and ak. But it's because we're in this English matrix, we're in this Western Gentile 400 years matrix, when we see the word ak, right? We might not know that, well, actually, there is aleph, Kaf, right, and there is alef chet, alef chet, chet, chet. The ch, 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 ch. that sound right there, the sound that like a baby does, the gurgling, gurgling, gurgling sound. The chet, right. So ach, ach is brother, and ach is an interjection that means like indeed, like somebody's asking me something. I said ach, ach, such and such and such and such. Like it says right here in Genesis nine and five. My point here is that if we go over here in Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, the first place in the KJV where the word surely appears, it actually has what word? It has a link H4191, which is the same word for the next word, which says die. So, wait, what's going on here? You see, the translator, and I'm not defending the translators, and I'm not just putting them down because we can see more we have more that's available now at this time for us than maybe they had at that time, right? So we're not going to impute, you know, like intent, you know, like evil intent to, you know, the person or the, these other people if we can't really cross-examine them. The only time we will do that is if they themselves have left us some evidence, like they wrote something and it seemed as though they was racist or they were off of what they said, then we can go into that commentary because that commentary or whatever is attributed to, to them. But looking at their translation and understanding, you know, metorgomen, metorgom, metorgomen, right? Understanding translation, how challenging it is coming from the Hebrew, the original languages, the is the Ethiopic into English, this is why we say that the King James Version is a good stepping stone. It's a good first level. That's why if you notice, most times, most of the interlineal softwares, the Bible softwares, Blue Letter Bible, other interlineal softwares, that they will have the King James Version for the word, the word or phrase by phrase. It's like usually a word for word, and you can see in some cases the phrase by phrase, right? So here, the word surely is the word moot. Right here, enunciated as moot. Right, moot. Right, we have moot. Right, die and moat. Right, moat, death. Right, so here, if you look at this and you think that this is what the Hebrew says, this is a reference to the root word, the root word being used in the Masoretic Hebrew. So this word here, H4191, is moot, right? And the next word is moot. So if you think that that's, oh, that's the Hebrew, I got it, so forth and so on, you're being presumptuous because then you'll say, well, it doesn't read surely die. It, it reads, therefore thou shall die, die. But now let's view more. I'm clicking on the view more, and let's click on the compare, compare. Now we have different versions, the Aleppo unpointed, BBE, some of the English versions, the HB, and, and these different versions here. Also, another unpointed version right here. We scroll down to the Tanakh, because the Tanakh here is the only one of the versions that also have the blue letter links, right? So, Hebrew speakers, right? Hebrew speakers, and we say scholars on that level, you know, using the word uh, Talmud in the Hebrew, like Dek Amesmor, disciple, Talmud would usually use this right here. And plus, we can always then verify it because we can go through the one that doesn't have the blue letter and then go to the one that has the blue letter. Now, the last part of the verse right here is from here. This is the last part of the verse right here. So we just highlighted it. 
All right, as best as we can for this particular highlighter. Ki beyom a kalika mi manu mi manu mot ta mut. Now ta mut. Here we have ta mut. Ta mut. I think I said uh, tamutun. That's another way of bringing out a peculiar sense of it. So all of this is coming from the root. Let's go over here and zoom in on the two words. Two words we highlighted. Surely die. So this is the phrase in the Hebrew. Mot. Mot. Now, if you read the H, that was the H uh, 4191, it says mut. But if you're reading the pointing here, it says mot. Now, some would say, oh, this is, this is wrong. No, in Amharic and Ethiopic, the word for death is also mot. The verb in the Hebrew is mut. <laughs> See, that might be a little bit complicated. And one say, well, you haven't extensively used rambling. No, we're not rambling. You don't understand it. If you get to understand it, then you recognize. Because at first, when we saw these differences, we thought, oh, man, they just, they, they're just covering up something. But as we studied more, comparative study, we got to recognize, okay, some of these scholars really had some level of scholarship, right? And we are, you know, appreciative, so to speak, for their, for their efforts. And then as we dig, dug deeper, we got to find out that they use Ethiopic, as we said in the other video that Zea Gazeto Zion commented to and said, well, if the concordance and the lexicon, you know, referred to the, you know, got it, got it, you said got it from the Ethiopic, then why didn't they, you know, refer to it? Hmm. Huh. If you learn something from what I have been teaching or sharing, and you're just explaining a point to somebody, are you always, or would you at all say, well, you got it from me? You know what I'm saying? See, see, we have this kind of hypocrisy now, in a, in a sense, that they didn't explain that. And then, second point, did you go to the concordance, or did you go to the concordance in the software or in the Blue Letter Bible? In fact, I was going to bring up a Blue Letter Bible um, where you can click on certain links and go there. If you went to the easy piece, you just click on the blue letter words, they're not going to refer to it right there because that's a summary. That's a simple summary. What you have to do is go to the text. In fact, we should have blue letter Bible on here right here. We've done it in the older videos. And when you scroll down, they'll give you what they write on their web page. And then they'll give you like a hyperlink. There used to be a hyperlink on the old blue letter Bible. Called Blue Letter Bible used to have an old, they call it the classic, and then they have another version, which is a little more, I guess, uh, social media friendly. They, they updated their website because they got to know that a lot of people were searching on their phones and computers and made it more easy, especially on the phones and other devices to search it. But they still have the classic, the Blue Letter Classic, right? The Blue Letter Classic where if you scroll down... We'll, we'll try to do another video on that to just show that because one would say you didn't ex you didn't go there you didn't explain that must we spoon feed when other people explain things like that we actually go and follow up and try to find it out and many times we find out that what people are saying is true and don't go out there and say well you know they had to spoon feed me you know and give them a kind of a generalized kind of a you know like a generalized kind of a diss in a sense right but we're not offended. Thank you very much. You got more? Bring it. Right? Here, let's go down here right here. So this phrase, mot tamut. Tamut means speaking to a male. Tamut is like you will die speaking to a male. Tamut. Now what's tamut is interesting that tamut is the, is the second person in the Hebrew form, but it can also be the third person feminine. So it's the second person masculine. Tamut, this form of the 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 verb, the, this form of the I think it'll be like of the 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 um the dikduk, what's called the dikduk or the 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 grammar, right? And the construction, the patterns, the binyanim. It's called the binyanim. We'll go through and we'll explain that too a little bit more. We didn't say bin yamin. Bin yamin is Benjamin. Bin yamin. While we said bin Yanim, Yanim and Yamin. One is Y A 
N I N. One is Y A M I N. If we bring it out into the English, all right. So here is speaking to Adam, the male, directly, and saying in these two words, right? Mot death tamut. But here the English says surely die. That's why we went to the next um, area over here. And we looked up surely, and in Genesis chapter 9, verse 5, it says surely. Because one might begin to think that the word surely means death. You see what I'm saying? And that would be like a, a false positive or something like that. But here we have the word ak. And I went further to explain the word ak. Some Hebrews and Israelites call their brother ak. Right. This is how they've learned it. They call it the Lashan Kadash and they say this is the, the original Hebrew and they they kind of um, big up what they haven't really gotten deep enough of a stance on. This here, Ach, is different than Ach. Ach is brother. Ach is an interjection. Let's go down here. An interjection, like a particle. They say they call it a particle of affirmation. Ach for show, like for sure. Truly, for sure, but it can have the sense of nevertheless. In fact, if you're looking at Strong's definition, you see where it goes up to the word only, and it has the colon. Let's just highlight this because I don't want one to say we didn't, you know, explain. We want to explain. We seek to explain. Only, colon, and then the hyphen there. Everything after the colon and the hyphen, all these other um, words here show how it is translated into KJV Bible. So it says that what's before this is trying to explain what the word actually, what the word actually mean. Everything after, for example, right here, the, let's just highlight the colon, the colon and the, the hyphen. Everything after the colon and the hyphen shows how you will find this word, whatever word is being focused on elsewhere in the scripture or elsewhere in the text. So Ak is found in some places and is translated as also. In some places Ak is translated as in any wise at least, but certainly. Right? And it is a particle of affirmation and it's akin to Aken. Aken, Aken. Akan. Some people say Akan, but Aken. Aken, Aken. Aken. And Aken, like you say Cain, Cain. I said to my brother, he said something incorrect. I say Cain, Ken achi, ken ach sheli, like yes, my brother, right? Or if I'm speaking in another sense, I am like saying for sure, for sure, for real, like you say, yeah, sure, uh huh, uh huh, like so, yeah, yeah, you know, like as we say that, that's how it's used in Hebrew. My point in going here was that the word surely, going to the blue letter Bible, the concordance is helpful, but it's only helpful in going into the root word that is the root of the in the Hebrew but the Hebrew as you can see when we brought up over here surely die it was mot tamut mot tamut and if you go and look this up it's mut mut right and what it's giving you here you see all these different forms the kal you see the kal, which is the kal right there, the kal, Q-A-L. You see where it says the polel. You see where it says the hefel. You see where it says the hofal. These are different senses of the construction, the construction of it. Just like the phrase that we zoom in on from Genesis chapter 2, verse 17, it says mot tamut. So mot is a noun as death. It's not in the verb form as mut, right? And the tamut is the verb form. So it's like death, you shall die. Death, you shall be dying. You will be dying. You will be dying to death in that sense. That's why we said that the sense wasn't that saying like people would say in the English that, well, in that day, you shall drop down and die. But from that point, from that day, starting from that day forward, you will die. And thus we get the thousand years connection, like a thousand years from Yahweh Hey. Ha Elohim, Eloheinu, right? It's perspective, he who be who he be, the power's perspective, that a day with him is a thousand years, right? So therefore, Adam did not live a full day, 
but he was dying from that point of his disobedience. Right? He was dying, not just physically dying, but psychologically. There was a psychological, a spiritual alienation death that ultimately led to his physical death as man is a trinity, man is a tripartite, a three-part being, a trinity, spirit, soul, and body. Now, quickly right here, 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 right? Let's go to the Gesenius lexicon. And what we're going right here is going over some basic study materials trying to zoom in on certain points, make the point, not going through an extensive Hebrew study. We can do that, and we will do that. But this was to respond to, you know, who lied, the serpent lied, and Eve, the woman, was beguiled, right? But not Yahweh, right, the Elohim, as we said, the liars or the people who are misled by some pseudo -gnosis, some pseudo-philosophies. All right, but let's go right here. Let's go right here. Let's go right here. Now, let's do this right here. Let's put this, let's see if we still have this on the search. Do we still have this on the search? Uh, okay, let's go, to, let me, let's go to the clip art, the clip art. There we go. You see this right here? We're going to click on that right there. We're going to put that in the search. You see that right there? That is the AE. I forgot what that symbol is called again. Um, there's like a special, you know, these special Latin English, you know, symbols, right? Now, that stands for Ethiopic, right? That stands for Ethiopic. Let's, while this is searching right here, right? While this is searching right here, it's going to go up to a couple of, uh, at least a hundred plus. That's searching through the Gesenius lexicon. Okay, let's prove that this is the Gesenius lexicon, you know, um, as well right here because he says right here down here he says also if concordance if one concordance possessive you know like like yadans yadans what all right but anyway concordances and lexicons got it from the ethiopic then why did you not refer to that also i did refer to that you mean why did i go through an extensive elaboration explanation well, because I didn't have that that information available at the time of doing the video, who lied, the serpent lied, and Eve, the woman, was beguiled, not Yahweh, hey, the Elohim. That's what was the main point of the video. I alluded to that while I was going through it. That was a minor point, but that was something, obviously, that you're interested in, right? And then you said, you know, this is ridiculous rambling, you know, a little, like a little diss and everything. Okay, great. Like, you know, it's like a like positive negative. Okay, it's a good evil sort of thing. I get it. Cause that's what this was all about, right? This particular video. But here, right, the subject matter. Let's go over here and see, see right here at the top is Jesenius, right? Okay, so here, let's do this right here. Let's, let's go over here. Okay, now what are we looking at right here? This is the a PDF, right? And we're going to print a print copy of this as well. It was on our agenda, the LOJ Society, some of the reprints, right? This is the Jesenius lexicon, right? Let's go all the way up here and just, just prove positive what we're looking at right here. It's one of the Google books, right? But it is, the copyright has expired on it, and we know the law is right there and doing a reprint. So we're going to do a reprint of this particular document. But here, here we go right here. Just so that one can see, this is the Gesenius, what we were talking about before. The Gesenius is Hebrew and Chaldee, Chaldee, and some say Chaldee, but really Chaldee, Chaldee um, lexicon. To the Old Testament scriptures translated with additions and corrections from the authors, thesaurus, and other works, right? All right, so it's Jesenius, and then this was done by this Samuel Pridol Tregele, right, Tregelis, right, but it basically was Jesenius did the work, and then someone else went over his work, you know, updating it and, like, tweaking it, you know, bringing it into the print form. This document was, um, there was 5,000 of them printed around 1893, interesting, 1893, one year after the birth of the Son of Man, the man-child leads to Farai. But here, here it says New York, John Wiley and Sons, this is where it was printed, right? Um, and also, I guess, in London, 
in London was printed by Samuel Baxter and Sons, a limited edition. That means there's only a set number of copies out there. So here, this is from 1892. Now at the top, you can see with the um, the cursor, whatever, like the, uh, I forget, that's not probably called cursor, excuse me for not knowing the correct name for some of these, you know, um, components in the software, but where the cursor will be, what's, what's blinking, right? That's Ethiopic. That's the abbreviation for Ethiopic. This document is about a hundred, about nine hundred and something pages, a little less than a thousand pages. So, what does this mean right here? Right. This means right here. We're going to click on it, and what we're going through right here is every place where it has Ethiopic. Every place they they showed, they decided to show where there's Ethiopic. And what we were saying is that people always say that, well, the Hebrew, the biblical Hebrew, they referred to the Greek, Septuagint. They went to some Syretic, Syriac, and Syretic. They went to all these other sources, but they often leave out the Ethiopic. Now, if you notice over here in the line that this, what word are we at? We're at the word, this is the word for ear. We're at the word Ozan, and the Hebrew is pointed as Ozan. Right, Ozan. Now, there's further research that we have done. I mean, to bring all this together and to definitively, we could say, fully, exhaustively prove this point. There's various works we will have to pull in. We have to pull in the works of um, I, Iob, Iob Ludov. I don't know if you know who Iob or Job Ludov. Job Ludov, who is mad, he says it was the German father of Ethiopic studies. In other words. He's a German, and for his people, he was the father of the studies of Ethiopia, going back, I think, to like the 1600s, 1600s, 1700s, but some of the early studies in Europe of Ethiopia. There is August Dillman. One's like, I'm naming some names of ones you should become familiar with, and as you study their works, you will find what we're saying about the points of reference in the concordance and lexicons right, to the Ethiopic. Right, but they're not giving the Ethiopic the credit. So what we start to say is that much of their understanding of biblical Hebrew has come from their studies of Ethiopic, and some authors have even so said so. So we pointed to Iob, Iob, or Job, Iob, because that's how they used to say Eob, Eob, right? Job, Ludolf. There's a August Augustus Dillman. Right, these are some just some major names that we are some some of our favorites, but also major names, right? You know, who have done exhaustive studies. A lot of the manuscripts we have availability to and compiled it in the Western libraries have come through the works of ones like Iob Ludolf, Augustus Dillman. Then we have others, a little more modern ones, who also have referred to this. There's there's um. Um, Ethiopian the Bible, a very good work by um, Edward Ullendorf. Edward Ullendorf, right? We have all these references, even some of the books available at LOJS and also on the Rastafari Groundation, LOJS.org, Rastafari Groundation. So there is Edward Ullendorf, his work, take note, Ethiopia and the Bible. Hopefully you can get, uh, I think it's a Schwinn Lectures. Some of his lectures, it was compiled into a small but very powerful volume where he goes into, you know, the Ethiopic scriptures, translations, and also making the links between the archaic Old Hebrew and the Ethiopic manuscripts. So these were like, remember, they were studying this from 400 years ago, even prior even prior to the 1611, these translations were studied, right? And there are some who say that the Ethiopic Bible comes from the Septuagint and the Nine Saints. That is the latest version. The la one of the last major versions of translation was the translation that the so-called Nine Saints of Ethiopia who came from Syria, made from Syretic and, and Koine Greek. But there were already existing Hebrew and older copies of older, more archaic Ethiopic before that. You see what I'm saying? So that's just the AD translation. That was the translation done in, in the AD, around 500 AD. 
but there were BC translations. And the proof of that, right, the proof of that, let's just point this out because we have this available on our website and you can download this as well where is that document i hope we didn't knock that i hope we didn't knock that document off um we'll have to maybe use one of these windows and search oh no there it goes right there this particular document right here preliminary notes this is from an actual copy a hard copy we had caused to scan we got it scanned and put up on the old rastafari foundation site and there's links there as well as lojs.org Right, it's called Preliminary Notes on Ancient Ethiopian History by Hailu Hapta. So he made this particular document that we had got a hard copy back in the nineties, right? And it was such a very good hard copy that we wanted our you know brothers and sisters and others out there to have access because um, um, brother Doctor Hailu Hapta, you see the, the author Hailu Hapta, then he was at the Department of History. City College, City University of New York, you know, did a very, very good study right here. Mm. And you know what? Let's let's go. We, we, we're here already. We're, we're here already. So let's let's go right here, and let's put let's put Ezra, Ezra. All right, let's put Ezra. Let's see if this goes into Ezra. Let's see Ezra right here. Okay, let's see if we can zoom this up. Zoom this in right here, right? Ezra, right? Remember, Ezra is the one who is accredited with um, the recompilation of scriptures after the Babylonian exile and the Jews, we refer to them as the black Jews, black Yehudi, came forward um, to Jerusalem or the New Jerusalem to rebuild the wall of Jerusalem and the temple and also to restore the, um, you could say, the, 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 the lifestyle, the way of life, the the of the tribe of Judah. Some say Judaism, in some forms of um, you know, which come to say this is where Judaism. Some say started with Ezra, so forth and so on. But they just using a Western term to confound you about the ancient reality. Basically, it's when some of the peoples returned from Babylon captivity and they wanted to renew their way of life. They wanted to live right, live holy, so forth and so on, and not go into captivity again, right? So here it says, this is from Hailu Haptu, he says the above account of how Hebrews, the Hebrews had lost copies of the Torah and asked the king, the Ethiopian king, Isor, Isor to send them the earlier books of the Old Testament, he says it's plausible both on chronological and other grounds. He's doing the research and he's trying to show that the Ethiopic, the Israelites of Ethiopia and the later, you could say, Ethiopian Beta Israel, the Jews, as well as the Ethiopian Christians in New Testament times had old copies that assisted the Hebrews of the biblical narrative with restoring their way of life. This is why if you go into some Judaic studies, they will say, you know, it's kind of this is not understood or known. And they put these question marks there because if they were to put Ethiopic there, it would kind of like just just complete the circle. But it goes on to say the obscure circumstances surrounding the restoration of the text of the Pentateuch by Ezra. Boom. Let's read that again. The obscure circumstances surrounding the restoration of the text of the Pentateuch. The Pentateuch, that means the five volumes. Pentateuch is a Greek phrase that means five volumes or the five books of Torah by Ezra. They say it's obscure. They, like, how was he able to do this? People ask. Right? Who comes to Jerusalem from Babylon after Zerubbabel make such accounts as the above is speaking of the Ethiopic passage, worthy candidates for very careful considerations. For, I mean, it's not, not consideration, very careful um, investigation. My bad there, right? Because I'm thinking about just showing you the cover of the book. I think I was written in the, in the 80s or sometime, right? We'll go back to the cover right there. Now, here is the passage. Here is the passage. We're saving this actually for later. Here is the Ethiopic of the passage. Just to put this here on the screen. Here's the Ethiopic of the passage that he quotes. Right? Let's go over the Ethiopic. Right? And this is from a document so you can see the full of full and, and take a screenshot so you can, 
you know, ones who are interested right here, right? This is a key connection with the Old Testament Hebrew, right, and the Israelites of Ethiopia. Check. The status and date of the Ethiopic or the Gutters version of the Old Testament has not been satisfactorily determined by mainstream scholarship, or as ones like Garfield and others would talk about the consensus, the consensus scholarship, right? Nor has the Ethiopian account been properly investigated and appraised. This is what we are arguing for, a proper investigation, a proper appraisal, but because of you know, these times of the Gentiles and the Anglo-American, European, and the whitewash, we understand why they know, and sometimes some of their authors kind of say so in their writings and documents, and this is what we seek to highlight, and this is what was going on when we're pointing to what the concordance and the lexicon. Yet, were the Ethiopian account found valid, it would have significant implications for the way ancient history is viewed. This is why when we say what we're saying, some would say, oh, he's just rambling. This is ridiculous. He's rambling. He don't know what he's talking about. He hasn't satisfactorily explained anything. But this is, this is some of the sources that we're referring to Ethiopic scholars and others who are bringing forth evidence that many of the European, the higher level European scholars, they know about. And the European Jewish, Canaanite Jewish scholars, they know about. But they suppress this because we're not putting, making them accountable. Because when ones like myself bring this forward, some of our own brothers, and I have to say this, Zera Gazeto Sion, make, make me sound like I'm, I'm ridiculous. I'm just rambling. I, I'm bringing no proof. I, I'm not extensively going through this or that. But it's good that you asked that. It's good you brought that forward because that has prompted this. Yet, were the Ethiopian account found valid, it would have significant impact for the way ancient history is viewed, especially the Judeo-Christian heritage. That would show that overtly known black peoples who have made a positive claim of Israelite link and Israelite descendancy, namely the Israelites of Ethiopia from Old to New Testament times, are telling the truth, especially the ancient sources, the ancient scholarship. Right? And derivatively, and derivatively, the Islamic heritage, because much of the Islamic heritage was preconditioned on the, the, the Yehudi or the Jews of Arabia, right? And the Arabia, Ethiopia connection, Africa, black people connection is very, very strong. Go watch Lawrence of Arabia. The text of the Gutters Bible, the Ethiopic, and some Gutters manuscript sources offer fascinating clues and leads that would help determine the status and date of the various early biblical versions, right? And that's, this is a backup point to what Zea Gazeto Tzion, right, had implied that we did not go into the further detail because that video wasn't the video to go into. This one is a little more a video, a vlog to go into. The following translation of a Gutters or Ethiopic passage is one such, and he underlines, important lead. It is taken from a manuscript account of the life and contending of Cauestos. Cauestos. Uh, Cauestos. His name is Cauestos. Right? So right here, you know, there's more. I'll put this up here. The, exegeti the exegetic tradition in Gutters, the Ethiopic, is profound. And yes, it is profound. Right? And this is where I can look from a modern perspective and say this is where some of the Orthodox Yehudi, Orthodox European Canaanite Jews, this is where they get this from. Because already it's from a prior tradition that our people and the Ethiopic and the Israelites of Ethiopia's testimony of. This is why we do what we do, Rastafari sabbatical, Rastafari rabbi, you know, Rastafari Jews on that level right there, right? To restore this heritage. Right? So the exegetic tradition in Gutters is profound, and there may be some clues and answers in that rich corpus. It is certain, in any case, that Ethiopian biblical scholars distinguish between at least four versions of the Torah. And here he refers to an author named Desta Tekla Wold, right, on page 140. And here he has the Masoretic Torah, known as the Orita Ayhud, or Yehuda, or, or, or Orita Ayhud, 
Then he says the priestly, the priestly Torah, the Orite Lewawiyan. Then he has the Septuagint Torah, the Orite Likanat, Likanat, Orite Likanat. And then he has the Samaritan Torah, the Orite Samrawiyan, Samrawiyan. I want you to take a note of that. There's four, four versions, four ancient versions. And this tradition here, right, of the Israelites of Ethiopia is then what connects the first, we could say, nearly thousand years, the thousand years leading to the common era known as AD. All right, all this, this is, this is the common era. So when people try to say that, like Garfield and some of, the clowns, and I have to say they're clowns, it's pseudo-scholarship, because when they boast and brag, like, yeah, we're going to destroy all this because of consensus, you don't know nothing because there's many of those people you're trusting, the pseudo-white or whoever the consensus mainstream scholars who either are ignorant of or are suppressing this. This is known, but this is not brought forward because once you bring it forward, people are going to be like, hmm. So why don't we start to look at what, what the, this Ethiopian, the Ethiopian tradition and the the, is and the biblical scholars. They already distinguish between four different, you know, four different versions. So the first one, the Masoretic, was the Orita Ayhud or the Orit of Yehuda or the Jews, right? And we see about the black Jews, the Israelites of Ethiopia, the oldest tradition of it. Now... Bringing this down here to the life and contendings of Cahuestos, because we're going a little bit over, you know, the time right here. We are going to do just a short, snappy video, but we said, nah, 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 nah. You know, nah, 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 nah. We don't want to just do that right there. The brother took out the time to spell my name correctly. You know, then put the title Ross, but still, he 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 called me by my personal name, like, you know, we be brethren, you know, Iadonis, you know, not Ross, Iadonis. So, boom, let's just... Go with it, right? This is a very, very important section right here. And what I'm going to do, as we just seal this up right here, because we're going to return to the the um, the Jesenius lexicon, right? But this is connected with that, right? This is a testimony how the Ethiopians, the Israelites of Ethiopia, and receive. When I say Israelites of Ethiopia, I'm talking about the B.C. time. The B.C. time, right? The Israelites of Ethiopia, the B.C. time, right? And coming to the A.D., right? Before the nine saints, they already had scriptures and documents. So some would try to make you believe that the Ethiopian um, Bible is only the latest version of it. The latest version of it was translated in about 500 A.D., by the nine saints who had come from Syria fleeing persecution into Tobia or Ethiopia. But even before that time, as this document testifies, there was already the B.C. version. And this all proves that Solomon, Queen of Sheba, their son, Minyalik, Bainalechem, Eben Hakim, is right and accurate and the 1,000 from the 12 tribes of Israel. This is also proof because otherwise you say, well, they already said that Solomon and Queen of Sheba. Some Israelites deny it because you have to recognize a lot of this information is not circulated out there. It's suppressed. It's kept behind collegiate walls, right, in little kind of disputes and everything and don't, you know, don't, don't, don't hit the streets. You know what I mean? Don't hit the streets. In fact, let's go all the way over here. Let's go over to the beginning just so ones can see this particular document right here. Preliminary notes, right, on Ethiopian history by this brother here, right, Hailu Haptu, the then, he was in the Department of History, the City College, CUNY, or the City University of New York. And here, that's what we wanted to get to. This was copyrighted, put out by Hailu Haptu, 1987. I don't know what has become of the brother, but to heal up Hailu Haptu. Hailu Haptu. Let's go to this particular page right here once again, right? And this is the point that we were seeking to make right here from the Jewish Encyclopedia. So what he's saying here, Hailu Haptu, is that the account from the life and contendings of Kawestos, right, it, it shows how 
the Hebrews or the returned Yehudi, the Jews, after around 500 something, right, um, BC, after they returned during the time of Ezra and Nehemiah, that you find in the books of Ezra and Nehemiah in the Bible, they had lost copies of the Torah or lost parts of the Torah. And they asked the Ethiopian king, King Isa, to send them the earlier books of the Old Testament, right? And this is very plausible, right? Very accurate. You know, this is one piece of information. Then as we get other pieces of information, we put it together. And there are other pieces of information. It's just that myself and others are seeking to put it together. And while we put it together, we're sharing some of the highlights of our put together. So it's very, you know, disingenuous or disrespectful for one to try to say that, okay, well, we're just rambling. This might be just above your mean, if you understand what I'm saying. You know, your mean. I'm not saying... You're, you're not nice, but you're mean, but above your acumen, your akum, to use that word in the Amharic or the Ethiopic akum, is plausible both on chronological and other grounds. The obscure circumstances surrounding the restoration of the text. So there, there is obscure circumstances, and here he points to the Jewish Encyclopedia, volume 5, that assesses Ezra's role in the following terms. They say, Ezra marks the springtime in the national history of Judaism. Ezra was worthy of being the vehicle of the law, had it not already been given through Moses. So in other words, they look at Ezra as a second Moses because of his restoration, that renaissance that he brought about. It was forgotten, but Ezra restored it. Ezra reestablished the text of the Pentateuch introducing therein the Assyrian or square characters, apparently as a polemical measure against the Samaritans. He showed his doubts concerning the correctness of some words of the text by placing points over them. So if you ever read a Masoretic scripture, you see there are certain points there. And sometimes there's some seemingly conflictory pointings because is it this word or is it that word? This is where the, the kare and the katib. The katib is what is written, and sometimes there's a kare. It's said a little different to what is written, and even in some of the areas in the scripture, the Masoretic scripture, it's like some would call it like faulty pointing. Like sometimes a word that is, 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 is like a letter, a letter drops out of it. You know, we can explain that in a little more detail. I'm just pointing to that just as a quick reference. Then he goes into saying this right here, Hailu Haptu. What text or text and what version or versions was Ezra working from? That's the point. So this is the point that they don't they say, well, Ezra is the one who brought together this and that and 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 helped to restore things. Great. But what text or text and what version or versions was he working from? If he should have placed points over words whose correctness he doubted, he obviously did not fully endorse the text he was working from, which he would have if it had been passed on to him as part of authoritative Hebrew or Jewish Yehudi tradition. Remember, Ezra was those who was coming out of Babylon. So what he sent, he sent messengers and word to the Israelites of Ethiopia community because he already knew there was already a community in Ethiopia from the time of Solomon, the Queen of Sheba, and the 1,000 from the 12 tribes. You see what I'm saying? So this is what now shows the truth of the Old Testament, the 1,000 years to, to, we say, the A.D. time. The most likely candidates as base text for Ezra would be the Samaritan, and Ethiopic versions. The traditions quoted above, however, indicate that Ezra took the great trouble of even introducing Assyrian or square characters, what we call the Asherit. The Asherit is like the, one may say the modern Hebrew, the square characters, right? Asherit characters to distance his text, the, what, we, what then can be referred to as like the unpointed and later the Masoretic text, as much as possible from the Samaritan, or we say the Northern Israel text. We have Israel and Samaria in the north and Yehuda and Judah in the south. And Ezra and Nehemiah, they were repping Yehuda because it was that uh, Judean remnant that returned during the time of Ezra and Nehemiah. Question that, that, that um, Hailu Haptu asks, is it possible that he might have had an Ethiopic version at hand? 
passed down to him from the time of Zerubbabel, right? And then he goes on. Now, this document is available, and not to get into all the areas right here, right, in this particular video right here, because as we said, that was not our main point, but this is the backative, because we were asked, well, if that was so, how come I didn't go into that? Because to go into that, there's a lot of passages, a lot of areas of, of, of documentation, previous books, resources, we have to bring forward to do it extensively, right? And to put in that work, what are you going to do? You know, how are you going to show your appreciation for that work put in since you will benefit from it? We could take the time and do a book. might take us maybe a couple of months, maybe a year or even more to compile a book, put it all together. But you think we're going to give you the book for free? We're giving a little bit right here as we have the time. But anyway, be that as it may, let's just hit this, this connection of James Bruce. If you know who James Bruce is, go Google him. In this, and I say Bruce Lee. James Bruce. In this connection, James Bruce, he's the one that was searching, I think a Scottish Scottish guy that was searching for the headwaters of the Nile. Where was the source of the Nile River, right? Um, his remark is interesting. And here's his remark from volume one on page 423 to 424 with the emphasis added. He says, though there is really little resemblance between the Ethiopic and Hebrew letters, you think? and not much more between the that and the Samaritan. Yet I have a very great suspicion that the languages were once much nearer akin than this disagreement of the alphabet promises. Because it is, I think, has 26 letters, the Amharic 33, you know, basic letters, the Hebrew 22. That's what he's bringing out. Right? Then this disagreement of the alphabet promises. And for this reason, that a very, now here's what the emphasis is, a very great number of words are found throughout the Old Testament that have really no root, nor can be derived from any Hebrew origin. And yet all have, this is the point, let me zoom in on this right here. And yet all have, in the Ethiopic, the Gutas, a plain, clear, unequivocal origin to and from which they can be traced without force or difficulty. Let's take a let's take a snapshot of that right there, right? And let's just take a snapshot of that right there as well. Right? Did you read that comment, that mark right there? of Jane Bruce. Jane Bruce is one of the earliest, I think he was in the 1700s. He was looking for where the Nile River began, the beginning of the Nile, the source, the headwaters of the Nile River, right? This is his comment down here once again, his comment down here once again. He says, a very great number of words are found throughout the Old Testament that have really no root nor can be derived from any Hebrew origin. Yet, all of these words, right, that have no root nor can be derived from any Hebrew origin, right, he says, yet all have in the Ethiopic, the Gutas, a plain, clear, unequivocal origin to and from which they can be traced without force or difficulty. All right. So that's the ninth of the quotes here in Haile Haptu's, um, you know, preliminary notes on ancient Ethiopian, Ethiopic, Ethiopian history, right? And then here, 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 Justinius lexicon. Now, here is just an a example. This is the third entry we have here. Let's go to the other two entries just to do this in order. We're not going to go through all of the words right here because there's 157, right? It's 157 um, links. The first one right here is, um, let's see, what, which, which word are we at? Okay, okay, Adam. Now, now the letter, the printing is a little off there, I guess, when they scanned it, right? It was like Adak. But actually, that's, that's the meme. That's the meme Sophit. That's the final M. Adam. Here we have Adam. To be read, to be ruddy. 
open parentheses, it says Arab and what uh, is that? Um, medieval English and oh, we have to look that up right there. Um, e and O, right? Oriental. Anyway, it says and A E T H, right? Ethiopic. Notice that right there. They're going to the word Adam. 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 You know, like from the very beginning, Adam. And here is a reference, that A-E-T-H. Maybe you didn't know that the A-E, that, that letter, that the A and E, that's like one letter, right? And the T-H with the dot there is a short form of saying Ethiopic. A short form of saying Ethiopic. There's a next one down here where it says page 206. You see what it says Ludolf? That's what I was talking about, Iob Ludolf down here, Ludolf. Right, Ludolf. Right, so here he is going into this right here, red, ruddy, right, red, ruddy, and you can see the. Let's just do this right here. Right here. Let's see. Let me go right there. That also, that didn't come up because sometimes the printing is so light that the search might miss over a word. So there might be some words that's missed over right here. Right? So right here, let's go back to that. We got to put the word in here again. Ethiopic. So let's go to, let's back that up right here. So that's that's the first one. So Adam, even though the letter, the, 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 the meme is somewhat missing a part because it's the scanning sometimes. Right? So that's why it looks open at the end, the last letter reading from right to left. Right, so here let's go to the next one. We'll get about three, four, or, or five or so of them. So here we have the word. Um, okay, we have the word Eid, Ud, Ud and Eid, Ud and Eid. You come across this a lot in the witcher column. They'll say that from an unused root. That's what he's mentioning, I think, in that video that um, Ze Agazeto Sion had commented to. Right, saying we didn't go through extensive. We're going a little more extensive here, but I don't know whether I hope brother, you know, understands or can understand a little bit better. Right, the reason why we was was a more extensive there, but still, thank you again for the comment. Eid and Ud, unused root. Right, the first entry to bend to inflect. They have the Arab, right? The Arab Arabic, right? Ad, right? Um, and then they have the, the, the while there, hence to turn, to turn about, to turn over, see the substantive, right? Then it's going through all of this right here. Uh, odot and ud in the Hebrew, odot ud. Also to gird, to surround, see aid, aid. It says see aid, if you're reading along with the entry we're reading, right? With this agree, Right, with this agreed ud. Now here has ud. So one has an alef and one has an ayn. Right? Then the highlighted part there in the orange highlight is the Ethiopic. Then it has the Ethiopic, the old Ethiopic font they used to use back in the 1800s, right? It had a weed. A weed. It has a weed. So here they're looking at eid and ud. And the Ethiopic Aweed. And then it says, this last is omitted in American translation. In Amer Trance. In American translation. You know that? So that's why sometimes you don't find it. You say, well, how come? How come, you know, if they got it from the Ethiopic, why don't they say it? Because they lie. Because they're suppressing the truth. Right? Because they lie, they suppress the truth. Let's go to one more. One more. We said we'll go to three or five. We got like 157 that show up right here. So that would be really extended. You know what I mean? Hit that cash app too, if you if you are able to. You know, hit that cash app as well, or the PayPal, the cash app. Support this work. This is work. We got more to show and to share. Right? You know, um <laughs> you know, it's it's not rambling on that level, you know what I mean? Um but anyway, here we have isn't, Ethiopic isn't. Let's go to the top of the word right here. The top of the word is ozan, where it says dual ozan. We're reading the Hebrew ozan, right? Az naim. It says which is also used 
as plural, Aznai. You know, sometimes when people don't understand what you're saying, they'll say you're rambling, they'll say that you didn't do your job, and so forth and so on. And some saying, like, you know, I really don't understand. Remember the Ethiopian eunuch? When Philip caught up with his chariot? Philip caught up with his chariot, you know, and he said, my friend, like, you know, do you understand what you're reading? He said, how can I unless some man guide me? Are you willing to be guided? You know, or will you support the guider in the guidance? You know, or sometimes people are just looking for somebody else to do all the work. They get the work, then they can run off and won't even get credit to where they got it from. And this is keeping in the buck. But anyway, we have Azne. Azne. Right? Azne. We have Azne, the ear, Azne, right? From the root, Azan. Right? Azan. So we're just reading through, and then we come up to the Arabic. It has the Arabic. Um, isn't a lot of isn't 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 right my Arabic a little rusty but that was my first language anyway here we have Ethiopic one of the first languages Ethiopic you see the Ethiopic is highlighted and the Ethiopic has isn't 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 now it's interesting because if you notice we just touched on um, the word Adam, it had an Ethiopic reference. That's right there in the beginning of the Bible. Then the second word was Ud, a, a, a weed, a weed, Ud, which means like witness in a sense, like to go around, but like a witness, like the Ud, you know, we'll, we'll deal with that a little later. But then it had isn't, isn't in the air right here. And you can see hearing, we'll leave some down the screen right there. Then we're in the root of the concordance. See, y'all going to the easy peasy version, which is good at the start. Look, this word here is achad or echad. The Hebrew at the top is echad. That's how it is pointed. The aleph, the chet, and the um, dalet, right? right? Then it has the constant. It has of achad, 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 right? So one pointing, echad, echad, other achad. Ahad. Oh, no, not the constant. Constructive. The constructive. The constructive is like when you are, like, if, if it's connected to another word, right? If it's connected to another word in some way, it's said a little bit differently for the connection. It's like when we say the ones, when we say, Haile, Haile is my power. When we're saying power of Trinity, it's Haile. Haile Selassie from the Gutters. If we're saying as yes, my power, if I say my power, the power of the Trinity, right? My power is the power of the Trinity, right? I would say Haile, Haile Selassie, no. Haile, my power, Haile, ye, le, Haile, power of, in that sense, constructive, power of, Haile, power of. So that means in the sense of Haile is different than Haile. Check, check. But here, this word here is echad, echad. Echad means one, right? The, the, like the first one, right? One, right? And then if you notice down there where the A-E-T-H is highlighted, it has ahad, ahad, ahadu, ahadu. Now, the Hebrew is the chet, right? And the Ethiopic is the halt. Halt, right? How can we explain this right here? Um, the 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 Ethiopic has three H sounds: a soft one, a middle one, and a curgling the ch -ch one, right? This one that's used for a hadu, a hadu is 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 like the, the the best comparison is like you ever hear like the Muslims or Arab speakers? They might say. Alhamdulillah, ham, ham, ha, ha, ha. It has that sort of a sound. So we have ahadu, 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 right? And it says in open parentheses, it says ahadu, right? That's how we would say it, right? Not, or you would say it, not ahad, not ahad. So you notice that? It's in the Ethiopic, it's ahadu, because of its particular dick duke and binyanin, its particular grammar and construction, right? And then it goes on to explain some additional stuff. Now, when you look up in the Blue Letter Bible, what they do is simplify this. They simplify this because even in going through this right here, 
we could spend a long time on just one entry to, to, to explain. I mean, unless you can explain what all this abbreviation, everything else mean, I'll sit back and watch your video. Link, link, link guy, if you're going to do that, I'll watch your video. And, and you know, and I'll, I'll give you the credit. I say, this brother, Zeto Zion, he's really building in so forth and so on on this, you know? But one more word, one more word right here. Right? See, the more lengthy takes a little more time. Right? And basically, we're doing this gratis, gracefully, for free. Get it? Got it? Check? Okay, so right here, let's go through this right here. I mean, give thanks to the brothers and the sisters that do donate, even if it's, you know, a dollar, or a couple of dollars, or, or, or several dollars. You know, like some, you know, who are able to do more, some do more. Some are only able to do less. They do less, but job bless. Here, look, we already had uh, 90 minutes on this video right here. This definitely will be the fifth one, the fifth and final one. Here we have achaz, 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 right? Which means to take hold of, to seize, like to grab, achaz, right? Yochez, and then it has F-U-T. That's the future sense. Yochez, 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 like like to seize, he will seize, it will be seized, in that sense, your haze, right? And it says, more rarely, ye echoz, ye echoz, ye echoz. And so there's different um, pointings of it to bring out different nuances within the speech, word, sound, and power, right? Um, what is it? Ahaze, ahaze, ahaze olam. I think there's an ancient name, one of the goodest names for um, Exiabia, for Yahweh, hey, for he who be who he be, as the, like the Almighty, the one who like holds the world. He holds it, right? So here is going through some examples in the scripture. We go through all those examples. You can see then it goes to the second form of the word, right? Ahaz, to take, to hold, right? And then it's going down here. And notice at the very end, Right? At the very end, it says, Ethiopic, the Ethiopic. And you see it right there. It says, Echuz. The Ethiopic says, Echuz, Echuz, Echuz. Not Ehuz, Ehus. It's not Ehus. You see how the, the transliteration says E-H-U with an accent over the U-S? But the Ethiopic says, Echuz, Echuz. So you see, sometimes one will be like, they look at the English and they want to be heavy, but they can't read the Hebrew or they can't read the Ethiopic or they can't read it very well. And then someone else who might be able to do so, they're saying, well, you haven't done a good job enough. Are you my student? Are you, are you your disciple? Uh, do you study with us as disciples? Then we all iron sharpen iron. Now there's, of course, some more right here. You know, we like to go through some more. This one right here, Ayala, Ayala, right? Ayala. You see what's highlighted right there? Is Chayel, 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 Chayel. And this comes from the Ayil, Ayil, which is stag and heart. Chayel, Chayel, Ayil, Ayil, Chayel, Chayel, Ayil, right? And that right there also relates to. Um, the, the word for strong, which is found over here, where we get, you see this word right here? Ail, ail. It has an alef, a yod, and a lamed. A-Y-L. That's at the root right there where it says um, masculine, proper, strong, robust, mighty ones, leaders, nobles of a state, a strong, robust tree. But this hebraically and ethiopically is a root for for the God, the power, El, El, El. But here you see it in its um, unembedded form. In other words, you see an Aleph. Let's zoom in to get this as clear as we can. Right? You see right here, you see an Aleph. There it goes. An Aleph with the Tzere. The Tzere, the two dots under it, brings out the A sound. Because right after it has a Yod. So remember the diphthong we mentioned earlier in this rather long video right here? Aleph, Yod. Then the Lamed. The Lamed. We're reading from right to left. Right? So it says, Ail, 
A-L, 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 A-L. This is at the root of the power, L. That you see above it, it has Eyal, Eyal, Ayal, Chayal, Chayil, Chayla. That's where we get the Chayla root right there from. Just to keep it on the sevens right here, we'll take it to one more right here and see where you have mother. So you see a lot of primary words, you see where it's linking to the Ethiopic. Right there. Let's look at this right again. This, this is the entry. Aleph, mean, the final mean, right? Aim, 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 right? That's aim right there, like mother. Then it tells you there in the English mother, open parentheses, the bracket, right? It has um, 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 right? Aim, um. Then the Ethiopic is M, M. The Aramaic is Ima, and the Aramaic is Ima. And then they even have um, the last one in the parentheses is the um, Samaritan. That's a Samaritan right there, right? Av Wa'aim, or modern Hebrew, Av Va'aim. Av Wa'aim, right there. So you see mother. So, so far, just in the first seven words that we've gone through, each one of them are primary Hebrew words. And we also went through Hilo Haptu's book where he quoted James Bruce, right? That words that have no root or source origin in what is called Hebrew are very plain and clear in the Ethiopic. So with that right there, 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 right? We're going to sum up this right here, here, here. And once again, you know, in grace we say brah. You know, we call you brother in grace. You know, we don't know nothing about you, but we still give thanks for your comment and we see your Ethiopic, the Ethiopicness of your name. Zer Agazeto Sion. Give thanks, give thanks and praise. Getting into the gutters a little more right here, here, here. Right? And we're going to seal up right here. A little bit more to come. Give thanks. Check out the description, hit the cash app, share, like, share, subscribe, you know what I mean? Get the views up on this video for at least others who would like to see it. This might not be other people's, you know, um, a cup of tea, so to speak, but those who have learned something are able to contribute a little bit or a lot, please do. Zara Gazeto, you want to get more, hit the cash app. We can have a reason and, and you, you could challenge our scholarship the right way. But anyway, thank you for your statement. Thank you for putting a little bit of um, properness on my name. Give thanks and praise. Shalom Chabarim, Shalom.